All right, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. And uh, now I'm going to an old friend who's fighting for some of the same things I believe in. I can't deny that. Uh, my buddy, Daniel Lanzalotta, who is, uh, he's known as, let's see, the plastician magician. Is that what uh, um, the, the publication, Inc. publication yes, said? Yeah, uh, that's what they tagged me as. And, and so let's just start at the beginning for people who don't know this rather remarkable story, um, an individual story, because I don't know anybody like you. Um, why did you one day say, you know what? I think I'm going to collect every piece of plastic I see. <laughs> how did it happen? It's crazy, I know, but how did that happen? It found me. I was living in the southwest of France with my son on the beach. I lived about 10 blocks away from the Atlantic Ocean at the time in the southwest of France in Biarritz, France. And I would sit there and I would play with my son making things. And then I started noticing stuff. And then one thing led to another. And then some time went by. I, the, the, the trash at the time in 1993, 94, 95 was pretty bad. And by the time I went back again, I had gone back and forth quite often. And 2014, I went back to do a show, an art show. And I started going out looking to collect plastics again. So I took a, a walk along the same beaches I had taken walks many times before in the early days of this. Right. And So now it's about 10 years. Yeah, it was it was insane. It was like from like my, it went more. from my ankle up to my knee. Well, let, let's move it forward now, um, and, and I'll give you two things. Number one, so you have from that moment every beach you go to, including Orchard Beach and um, you know uh, Coney Island or um, out in Long Island, you pick up plastic. And Bronx sure River, yeah, I, I'm constantly collecting plastic debris. And then the second part of my two part thing here is that there is no way to separate your doing that while you're an artist and a designer and all that kind of stuff. There's no way to separate that from the political uh, point of view that this is wrong. And you taught me this uh, years ago on TV, that we have got to figure out a new way of packaging our stuff. Well, it's it's well. It's, it's much larger than that, but I, you taught I me not, that. I try not to make it a political thing, but it becomes more and more that way. But right. now people it's like me drag it out of you. Go ahead, say it again. I'm sorry. It's it's more, it's become more philosophical for me because the journey has been from my son being three years old. He's now 28, so 25 years of this, and it's become a spiritual quest, and now it's become a quantum physics uh, thing for me. So I've been reading and studying quantum physics and how this applies to who we are as human beings, that we come from this one source. So over the years, over right before COVID, about two years before COVID, I started collecting crack vials. I was going to ask you to show us the, so these crack are crack vials. vials. Can you hold up the jar or bowl that you uh, have? It would, be, it's, it would be hard to do that because I would have to move the camera. Because it's I, so I have large. thousands of them. Thousands. thousands. And where have these crack vials been? Oh, there you go. There's a picture. Anderson put that picture up. Where where have these been picked up from? Uh, I've been collecting them from um, Harlem, Brooklyn, and the South Bronx. Um, and... You know, before, and I do want to show some more artwork because an ink publications, um, you know, was correct in um, talking about and showing some of your artwork. But um, what is the end piece? Or the end piece is something larger than you generally will be well, able to the, do the on your own? Well, the crack, the crack thing became, uh, uh, at the time I was living in Harlem in 2019 right. to 20 like 21 or something like that and i started seeing crack vials and i started seeing them as a single stream plastic in the environment and what that impact was and then as i started collecting them covid happened and i went back to collect them again as covid tamed down but then i made a connection between uh what a crack vial is so a crack vial this tiny little object here if you could see that one i'll get a better one if you could see that crack vial, it's very tiny. It Not only is the vial toxic and insane as a single-use stream of plastic, but the content of it is insanely poisonous. But it's also equivalent to this kind of thing. Uh, so this is a plastic laundry detergent bottle. And the contents of this product is also toxic and, and poisonous. And we're using it to wash our clothes. And then you wonder why well, we have the, the issues we have. So you look, you look at volume, OK? You, I don't know how many of those little crack vials you could fit into that 
um, laundry um, detergent. Now, there are people who would say, well, you're exaggerating the amount well, of no, what, poison the, in the laundry detergent. No, the, 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 but I'm just saying in terms of volume, your laundry detergent and your bowl of crack vials are almost the same. No, this no? is this is thousands. Of, <laughs> this is a thousand, fifteen thousand, twenty thousand times worse because of the content. So there's always there's always a residual amount of crack in this. Mm -hmm. And so when this hits the ground, that's where my concern became uh, important to me, because I started to under, try to understand what the impact of the runoff of this product, this this toxic waste. And what does this really represent as a as an item, as a crack vial? It's a, this is a new form of enslavement. That's what this is. This this is this represents broken people because when I go to collect these things, I, I actually speak to a lot of the people who use this stuff. I don't just go in and, and collect. I actually have conversations with folks, and there it's heartbreaking to me. It's it's heart wrenching because it's affecting our community, and it's also it's affecting Black and Brown communities. What, 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 it's give epidemic. me one. It's epidemic. It's got insanity. it. What? Give me one story that they've told you. Something that, uh, I, that uh, gives, you know that explains what you just. I, I I was in there about a month or two ago in in Marcus Garvey Park in particular. I wear my art pieces when I go out into the world, and I was collecting. There were three or four uh, crack users on a bench, and I was close enough to this woman called over to me, and she says, "What are you doing?" And I said, and "I said, oh, I'll, I went over to her and I spoke to her just like a normal person, you know." No big deal. And we had a conversation. And, and what, did, what did she say? And what she said was that she has been written up the New York New York Times. Her name is uh, Chanel about her situation. It's which a, is a, which is what a, a, the homelessness. Mm -hmm. uh, and and then she I was also speaking to the single use item as a in as a plastic in the environment. She, she got that immediately. She was articulate. She was smart. And she looked at me and she says, look where I am. She was, S she was sitting so, on the beach without a so home. Heartwarming right? to me. She, she blew my mind. And I realized that I have to say something. I have to stand up oh. and speak for the so, dis so, franchise. So for uh, all of the stuff that you've done, and I want to show some of the jewelry and the same thing that ink publication um, put out, um, you've now morphed to some degree, aside from just collecting plastics and the little straws that go into uh, your Starbucks cup and everything else, right. you have now morphed to say, well, wait a minute, this is even more toxic than that other stuff that I had been working with. It's, it's toxic on so many levels. And for me, I, I'm born and raised in the Bronx. I come from multi ethnicities. I identify as a brown person, mm -hmm. and so when I go into my community, I I am heart I, I'm heartbroken to see what's happening wow. with just just the crack. Dan, and, and, Dan, and, and um, what that means? Do, do you see yourself, um, you know, as an artist and a creator and an advocator, um, moving even into um, getting to the social causes that that drive people to use this kind of drug? I mean, yes, yes, absolutely. You do see yourself. So, so I mean, this is a very interesting story. And and again, we want to, uh, you know, credit Inc. publication for putting it out, although we've been talking about these things for a long time, is that the whole story morphed from your upsetness with plastic, taking it all the way to now say, wait a minute, there are social ills that make even the plastic worse. Right, because my tagline for my work mm. is, for many years now has been I bring significance to the seemingly insignificant. So yeah, when so I hold some so stuff, when I make we have some stuff we can show. Go ahead. So so when I make something, right? So this is a piece called um, put it Yolanda in front of the camera. If you mind. Put it in front of the camera there. Wow, and that's so all this, plastic this is made, you created. This is, this is such a beautiful piece. It's got cigarette lighters, straws, toys. It's it's insane. This piece. And these are all and, things you picked up. Yes, this is all trash from the streets or the beaches. Um, so each piece, like a cigarette lighter, if you could see the cigarette lighter there. We can. So when that's on the street, a cigarette light is one of the worst things in the environment. It's right up there with crack violence. So if you have one, what do you do with it? Excuse me? If you have one, and there are many people who have them, what do you do with them? Can you uh, well, throw that's, them away? That's, that's, that's a social dilemma that people have made a choice. You have, you're making choices. 
as you do every day with your life. So your the choice about plastic is the solution for me at the moment. It's been my platform all along is not to use it. Don't don't use it. Don't buy it. Stop it. And yeah. that's even, even that's as difficult as that is. I mean, listen, you got to really shun plastic bags. It's not there to walk away from them because every place you go, you're they're offering you plastic. Anyway, show some more stuff. You have some jewelry so, to show. My my latest piece is this um, dedication to women. This is made with about fifteen hundred to two thousand handmade beads. So I collect plastic, I punch the plastic out, and then I string them together using broom bristles. Wow. Uh, so there'll be a, this is a ceremonial piece celebrating women. And so that, that, that piece and this piece here, uh, this is a piece that's dedicated to uh, the Eve gene, which is the mitochondria uh, original gene that originates all of humanity from Africa, black women. This piece is specifically dedicated to black women. Uh, and where we come from. So it's it's an interesting thing to look at it from a genetic point of view and to, I, to follow it back that far. Maybe, maybe we'll go like this and how I started or somewhere along the way toward the beginning, I asked about the end game. Now you're doing all this stuff. Is the, Part of the end game, of course, is to be an artist, make a couple of dollars being an artist. That wouldn't be the worst thing of all. Um, but is there an end game or you're just going to keep putting it out until uh, until you don't have enough materials to work with. I guess. Well, that's not going to happen anytime <laughs> soon. I, I, I talk to a lot of artists. I follow a lot of people and I go to a lot of cultural events and openings and everybody out there is buying their art supplies. I, I never buy my art supplies. I just well, go outside and I go to or, the beach, you know, wherever I'm sitting or standing. The plastic is literally we're drowning in it everywhere we turn. Do you, do you go through? Go. Um, do you go through garbage bags? I mean, do you? It's do you, very rare that I go through a garbage bag. Wait, wait, hold on. Nice my audio just cut out. Is, say, say that again. I'm sorry, Dan. I don't, I, don't, I don't usually go through a garbage bag, but the nice thing about garbage bags, if I'm taking a garbage walk uh, in one of the boroughs, Bronx, Manhattan, wherever, Brooklyn, those bags are clear plastic, so I could see it. I don't have to really go like crazy. And sometimes I see some toys and then I'll, I get excited by the toys. <laughs> yeah. Listen, you you have a point of view that you are 1000% dedicated to. And I have to tell you, I don't, I know I interview a lot of people. I talk about environmental, I talk about artists. I don't know anybody else who does what Daniel Lanzalotta does. Check him out in Ink Publications, right? At, yes, you have. The and link. if you if you find um, something in the street of interest, contact Daniel Lanzalotta. I, people do. <laughs> I'm sure they do. And uh, so thank you so much, Dan, for joining us. Thank you. I, Gary. I'm sure we thank will you, extend Andy. the conversation to the next time uh, you, you come on the program. Great. Thanks so much. Have thank a you. Great day. Okay, thank folks, you. that will do it uh, for the Bronx Buzz. Uh, you know what happens next? I, I, we thank Anderson, who's the producer. We will say, I'll see you next week. Good night. Mm -hmm.